All right, best of the year sand. Uh, you may have made a mistake with this, or this might be your first tank, but uh, today you will know which sand to get. And we're gonna start off with the number one most popular as picked by all of you guys. What is it? It's the uh, Carib Sea Special Grade, and there's a really good reason as to why. It's the size of the granules. Mm -hmm. It specially stays in place. All right, how about though, what's best for a brand new tank and making it easier from the get-go? There is one option better than the rest. Yeah, and that's gonna be Carib Sea's Ocean Direct. And the reason it's so good is because this sand is just picked up from the ocean. They don't uh, grade it and sift it they, the way they do with the other sands. It is an added bacteria like some of the other uh, wet options. This has got all of the good stuff right from the ocean and you can see it in the DNA testing. Yes, for me, uh, the uh, like falsehood alert went off on the packaging for me when I first saw it, uh, because all of these are supposed to be live. But the reality is, is most of the live sands out there uh, have to actually be sifted. They're dried, then they're sifted to get into the grain size you want. And then they put it back in there with some water and with the water it has like a little bit of bacteria in there, but it's not on the, rock, on the sand itself. This is Kind of live, but not really. It's more or less like buying dry sand and adding some Dr. Tips. Exactly. Uh, whereas this one right here, the Ocean Direct, you know, claimed that it has natural biome of the sea. We actually did a whole series of tests on it. Big, long, like six month long investigates in a variety of different things. But we confirmed, man, this thing has the biome of the sea. It has the types of bacteria uh, and archaea that lives on surfaces uh, in the sea and makes biome. So uh, it matched the same biome as some really established tanks as, uh, that we had as well. So uh, end of story, man. I am now a firm believer and uh, it isn't the number one option out there, but I think it probably should be. All right, next best. There is one out here when you got to think about habitat. It's not just some sand sitting in the bottom. Some might live in there or use it. So what is the best for sand sifters? When it comes to sand sifters, you want something that's gonna be really small grain and light, something they're gonna be able to filter through or move through easily. And that's gonna be Oolite because it is super small. It's basically a sugar sized sand, sometimes even a little bit finer. And you can also get the uh, Oolite in the Ocean Direct as well. Mm -hmm. They have that super, super fine version. So you can have the best of both worlds. Uh, or if you just want to add some for one of those critters that you got that needs that fine sand, you can pick it up dry or in the regular uh, Ocean Direct as well. A couple of things here. They have the Oolite sand, but they also have like the normal original grade. And the original grade is actually, we forgot about this, is a mix of grains because it hasn't been dried. Yes. You know, so it's kind of got like a little bit of light in there and a little bit of special grade in there. So it's somewhere in between. Uh, one of the things you think about sand sifters, uh, actually Elliot from Rain Collector showed me this the other day. Oh, awesome. uh, and he's like, you want to know how to know what uh, like sand sifting gobies uh, sift? go look at pictures, use like Google images or the video, and you can go watch them in their habitat. And sure enough, almost all these sand sifters, super fine oolite or even like silty sand, yes. you know, like almost kind of muddy in some cases. Uh, so that's what they're doing in the wild. You will get them to use bigger grains, but it's not good for them. So if you really want to have some of those types of fish, uh, the oolite is probably the best and just really don't get too big. All right, all that said, this is why nobody gets Oolite for the most part. Uh, what is best for high flow tank, which is a lot of our tanks? Uh, in that case, you're gonna want something that's going to be the special grade or larger. So the special grade is a really nice kind of balance between it looking like a sand and kind of acting like a sand, but not being so light that your pumps in your tank are gonna pick it up constantly and throw it all over the place. Uh, but if you have a really high flow tank, going even a little bit bigger than that can be helpful, especially like high flow SPS tanks, stuff like that. So one of the, the most popular used to be the one that's called Fiji Pink. Yeah. Uh, and it has like little bits of pink quartz in there that you would never see unless you used a microphone or a microscope. Yep. Uh, and and uh, it like was really, really popular because of the name, but it's actually finer and it blows all over. Now, special grade will full blow up as well, just not as bad. And that's why some people use this uh, coarser stuff. But yeah. uh, the coarser stuff collects a lot of detritus yeah. too. Like it's a ebb and flow. It also turns purple. Yeah, because know? it doesn't roll over the same way sand does. Sand sifters have, like they can't move it around the same way. So you always have the same side face up. It's gonna get covered in coralline. Yeah, you gonna manually turn it over. Yeah. So it's a balance. Bigger means it doesn't blow all over the place. Uh, smaller does, but it's a balance. And I would say almost everybody visually likes smaller better as oh, yeah. well. So find the balance in there, but special grade is the one that most people will pick. 
How about best thing to keep the sand in place regardless of what you use will make it better. There is an option. Yeah, you had this idea earlier and I was actually blown away. It's such a smart idea. And that's using a foundation rock at the edge of the sand close to the glass so that when the water's slamming into the glass, it doesn't uh, go straight down into the sand and kick that up. It's gonna break against the rock first. And you can basically entirely hide this rock with that sand just up to the tips there. And you're not gonna have your sand blowing everywhere. I'd call it create sand dunes, you know? Yeah. So what's happening is you'll see it blow around, it hits the glass. You'll see it definitely where it hits the front of the glass. You'll see it where the two pumps hit and create turbulence and blow it away in the middle. Uh, and left to its own devices, the little bits of sand will flow all over the place. However, you can put little dunes in here or artificial ones. Now this is that foundation rock from Marco that's been like machined flat, sits on the bottom of the glass. Well, now that sand will hit something instead of just keep going over and over again. You can also make little islands for like your zoanthids and, you know, mushrooms and xenia or whatever that you don't want all over your rock. Uh, but these things can serve purposes, but like only the little tips of it are going to like really come out of the sand and this will prevent all of it from, you know, getting blown away. In fact, you could even, if it's still getting blown away, you know, put a little bit of like crushed coral or something in front yeah. of it. But I think that I'm going to start using these more and more often around what would have been open sand before to create those dunes and artificial blocks to stop all of it from getting blown away. All right, stole the thunder there a little bit, but uh, what's the best for mixing two sands together to prevent it from blowing all away? In that case, uh, mixing special grade, which is already a pretty heavy sand as far as sand goes, but visually very much still looks like sand, along with something like crushed coral uh, that can kind of fill the gaps and keep all of it kind of stacked together. There will be some kind of stratification of it over time where they're gonna to wanna to separate. But if you have a sand bed, you should be cleaning it. And that's a really easy way to get it all back to, to where it needs to be and mixed up again. And that's probably gonna be your best bet. One of the things that people probably think about is like, you know, trying to incorporate it all together. The reality is, is when you try to mix it all together, in the end, the flow is still gonna bl flow, bl or, uh, blow away the little tiny grains and the big ones will be left over. So it's gonna separate. Yeah. Uh, you can just kind of own that. So one of the things that you could consider doing is actually just letting it blow around finding out where the dead spots are and then using some of this crushed coral to fill it in. And yes, it will look different than the surrounding sand, but it won't look like a bare bottom on the tank. Exactly. Uh, you can decide for you which one that you prefer. So I don't know if I necessarily feel like I need to incorporate it all together that way because the reality is, is on the sides and stuff, it's unnecessary yep. in, in certain areas. So find out where the areas are unnecessary and fill it in with the crushed coral. You won't be looking at the bottom. We'll have a little bit of difference though. All right, here's a cool one. What if you like contrast, best for contrast, what is it? It's gonna be the Hawaiian black sand. It's basically the only black sand uh, and it looks really good. Having it on the bottom of the tank and then having your corals with all that color pop and having that dark substrate on the bottom. It's just, it has a really, really nice look to it but you gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the reality is it's a uh, Hawaiian lava. So <laughs> it came out of the ground. It has little minerals and stuff in it. Uh, and if you run your uh, magnet cleaner by it, it will suck one up uh, and it'll scratch the hell out of your grass. Uh, uh, that alone, man, I would never use this. So you just gotta rule magnet cleaners off the table. You do yeah. not use a magnet cleaner if you're going to use this. But also you said today that it ruins some other things too. Yeah, if you're not careful and you've got fish that like to kick it up or you're just not paying attention, because it's ferrous, it'll stick to the magnets in anything, including your flow pumps. So uh, keep your flow pumps uh, high off of the sand bed. You don't want anything close to the sand bed with that ferrous material in there, uh, just so you're not scratching up your, your impellers and doing nasty damage to your flow pumps. Okay, so I gotta tell you, you asked me earlier, have I ever seen a reef tank like in person that somebody used this? And the answer is no. I was like, I was actually surprised to hear out that loud. But every time you talk to any experienced reefer, they all tell you, yeah, that's super sexy, but no way. Yeah. Right. Uh, for me though, still super sexy. And I do think of, the, uh, of places that I might put it. Uh, I might put it in a fish only system, yep. you know, where uh, the lights are kind of dimmer. I'm not growing as much algae in the glass. And I might be willing to actually do it by hand. Uh, also, the, the, the sand is going to look clean now because yep. white shows every last bit of gunk. Black yeah. does not. Uh, so there are instances and there's a reason why it's sitting in here and it's bagged and they're still selling it. But no going into it. No magnet cleaner and keep it out of your pumps.
All right, all that said, which one would you use? Uh, especially because of all of the testing we did and showing how it affects the microbiome, I'm gonna be Ocean Direct all the way from now on. I don't think you're ever gonna be able to change my mind on that. Uh, I'm done, man. I'm, I'm into, like, uh, helps us fight all kinds of uh, new problems in a tank, helps us establish that microbiome, stuff that you can't see with the naked eye, but is absolutely happening in the tank. We can help that process, especially in a world of dry rock. And uh, I think I'm going to start incorporating. I use islands effectively all over the place for putting corals and stuff that has done this. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to have coral on it. I mean, you can just create little erupting bits of rock coming out of the bottom that will create that sand dune. And I think that will allow me to up my flow game and even use a sand like Ocean Direct that has a special grade in it or is that size and some finer stuff more effectively. That's the sand in the can. We're also going to do all kinds of things like best controller. We're going to do best test kits. We're going to do best heater. We're going to do all these things best of the year. Check them out in the playlist right here.